What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to a very exciting Liverpool transfer news video because the English reports are saying that Liverpool have reportedly been offered a huge chance to seal the transfer of West Ham centre-back Issa Diop on loan. He is just a 24-year-old centre-back and he is experienced already in the Premier League. So in this video we will take a look at what the report says, also what Issa Diop could bring to Liverpool and I think right now he would be a fantastic loan move for the, uh, uh, until the end of the season. It's a no-brainer. I think Liverpool have to sign a centre-back even, uh, even if it's just a six-month loan deal to help Fabinho and Henderson move into midfield or at least one of them move into midfield because I think we have missed them in midfield very much and Playing Fabinho at the back and playing Henderson at the back affects the whole team, not just the defense. And uh, I think that would be a fantastic move. So guys, if you are excited about this news, leave a like and let me know in the comments below. Do you think Issa Diop would be a great move for Liverpool? Do you think Liverpool need a centre-back right now? Or can we finish in the top four or even challenge for the title without signing a centre-back? I don't think so, but uh, you guys might find it differently. So West Ham are reportedly ready to listen to offers uh, to permit Issa Diop to leave the club on a loan move because he has fallen out of favor at West Ham. I mean even Balbuena who in the first half of the season were ever present has fallen down the pecking order. Uh, Dawson and Ogbona are West Ham's uh, preferred centre-back partnership right now and it looks like Issa Diop is a fourth choice centre-back at West Ham and at, the, at the moment he can't get the game time so he would uh, I think start regularly at Liverpool and this could be absolutely fantastic news for Liverpool exactly what they need because Issa Diop is a Premier League proven centre-back who is only 24 years old 194 centimeters tall so he's a very tall player last season he played 38 games in all competitions 33 of them came in the Premier League <coughs> sorry last season he played 34 games in all competitions and the season before last so two seasons ago he played 38 games for West Ham in the Premier League and last season he scored three goals in the Premier League uh, so he's a threat from corners and set pieces and it would be the most realistic option for Liverpool right now it's very very hard to attract uh, and uh, sign a great centre-back would uh, want to leave their club in the January transfer window. So in total, Issa Diop has made uh, 73 appearances across the last two seasons, uh, not counting this season. And Joel Matip is very, very unreliable. He constantly gets injured. He can't play five or six games in a row without getting injured. That's why I think signing Issa Diop would be the perfect solution for Liverpool right now. And after Issa Diop starting regularly for West Ham in the past two seasons, he start, struggled with injuries a little bit this season but also he has uh, really fallen down the pecking order as I said and sometimes a player like that just needs a change of scenery, a change of club, change of manager and the right coach to bring out the best in of him, the best in him once more and it's a solution that could pay off for Liverpool, for Issa with Diop and it's, it would be perfect because we don't need to sign a centre-back for the long term right now or, or maybe we don't want to because Van Dijk and Gomez are coming back I still believe that in the summer we absolutely have to sign a centre-back and I think we will but right now the market is very very difficult and I want to look it up how many times Issa Diop played this season. So this season Issa Diop only featured four times for West Ham and last season he wasn't ever present but I think then he got injured and he has been on the bench regularly actually and he only started once uh, in the past few months against Crystal Palace since then he has been on the bench. Uh, yes, he played 90 minutes against Doncaster yesterday in the FA Cup where West Ham won 4 nil. He played one game in the uh, League Cup uh, as well and that's it. So he uh, overall has just six appearances this season because he has been on the bench most of the time. So I think Issa Diop would love to see uh, Liverpool come in for him on a loan deal and I think it's a no-brainer. Even Jurgen Klopp himself confirmed in press conferences that he wants to sign a centre-back but but he can't make that decision. That's up to the owners, to the club hierarchy. And if the owners don't back Jurgen Klopp, the most successful manager in recent Liverpool history, it's absolutely criminal. And it's one of the biggest mistakes that they can make. Undermining a manager 
like Jurgen Klopp, he could actually get upset and it could uh, fall apart at Liverpool. If Liverpool finish outside of the top four, some of our big players might want to leave. Wijnaldum already is looking uh, to leave and others to, could follow. And if Jurgen Klopp is not backed by the club and if he is not backed in the transfer market, he might want to leave as well and try something else and I would hate to see that happen. You and Klopp has built one of the most incredible Liverpool sides but we have so many injuries that he needs help and I think a loan deal is the minimum that the FSG and the Liverpool owners have to do for Jurgen Klopp. And John Barnes said about said this about what Liverpool should do. The January transfer window is always a challenging time for teams to get their number one target as clubs aren't willing to give away their best players so easily. There is no long-term solution currently as we need to think about what to do for now with Liverpool. Fabinho and Jordan Henderson will not be playing centre-back for the rest of the season, so Liverpool need to think about short-term solutions. A short-term solution can be a very capable, experienced centre-back who does not play for one of the top teams and who might cost you 15-20 uh, million, which is not a lot of money these days. That might be a possibility. We know that Upamecano and Koulibaly, who are the players we really want, are not available right now. If a short-term solution of a decent player for 20 million is going to give you a better chance of winning the Premier League title, finishing in the top four, then Liverpool should be looking at that, should be looking for that kind of player. I'm not saying Liverpool can't win the league without bringing in someone new, that's what John Barnes is saying, because everyone is playing inconsistently and no one is making big signings. But if it enhances their chances to win the Premier League again, then they should do that. And Jurgen Klopp is on the lookout for a centre-back but he can't sanction the transfer unless the owners and the club hierarchy gives him the green light. And Matteo, a former Liverpool defender, said that it's a very difficult window in January. Liverpool have got some good young players, they are just not quite ready yet. That's the reason they haven't had more opportunities and they probably haven't got the quality that we need to be seeing week in week out in the Premier League. I think it's an area that they would have looked at and thought, can we do some business in January? But I I don't think they will, uh, Matteo says. I think they will stick with what they have. Matip and Fabinho will be f fine playing center half. It's just if they get another injury now, they had to play one of the young lads or Jordan Henderson back in there again, and then we, Liverpool will struggle. I don't think we will try and sign another center half until next season. If that is true, that is absolutely criminal. One of the biggest mistakes that Liverpool can make. Why not just bring in a lone player? Why not? Sign somebody on loan who helps Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool until the end of the season. The loan moves are exactly for these scenarios when you have too many injuries but you don't want to commit to a five-year contract and signing a big centre-back in January. Maybe the right kind of player that Liverpool targeted uh, for next summer maybe is not available right now. I can live with that. I can honestly understand that. But then so just bring somebody in for six months. Issa Diop would be the perfect solution. And if Liverpool sit on their hands and do nothing and Jurgen Klopp doesn't get a centre-back that he wants and if he misses out on the top four, how would that make Liverpool feel? The Liverpool fans, how would that make Jurgen Klopp feel. He feels let down, I'm sure. Privately, of course, uh, he won't say it publicly. I think the last few press conferences, it's um, the most clear indication that Jurgen Klopp is crying out for a centre-back, he's crying out for a transfer. Somebody who is experienced, who knows the Premier League, Socrates is available on a free transfer, Issa Diop is available on a loan deal. And that's just two of many, many players that I'm sure are available. If Jurgen Klopp is not backed right now, then the owners are making one of their biggest mistakes in their 10 years of owning Liverpool or 11 years, whatever that is. And I think Jurgen Klopp, uh, rightfully so, would feel angry and disappointed and let down by the, by the owners. And I think it's, it's absolutely criminal if Jurgen Klopp, uh, the Premier League and Champions League winning manager, isn't backed in the transfer market. Ray Houghton, who won two titles with Liverpool in his playing deals, uh, this is what he said. If, if uh, you lose Virgil van Dijk and if you lose Joao Matip and Joe Gomez, which they, these are the heartbeat of the central defense, what you do then is you bring back Fabinho from center midfield to center back, likewise with Jordan Henderson, 
Henderson, but that might weaken the midfield slightly. One of the areas where Liverpool aren't quite doing as well is that they aren't breaking from midfield into advanced positions. That's something that we, they were doing with the free forwards coming a little bit deeper, leaving the gaps to move into two of the fullbacks, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Andy Robertson, were two of the best going forward, producing opportunities, getting assists, but their final ball isn't of the best quality at the moment. And th that's the reason why they aren't getting those clear-cut opportunities inside the 18-yard box. Based on what happened when I was at Liverpool, I remember going through seasons where in the first half, you weren't quite at it as much as you should have been. And then you galvanize, you come together. I I've heard James Milner and one or two other Liverpool players saying it's the time for the players to stay, stand up, we've got to put it right on the pitch and he's absolutely right um, Milner. This will test the Liverpool players because the last two and a half seasons they have been fantastic winning the Champions League, winning the Premier League. I think there is enough quality in this Liverpool side. Once they start winning again and get that fee winning feeling back they will go on a very good run and I think that's just my opinion. Winning against Manchester United at Old Trafford would be the perfect tonic, the perfect confidence boost for Liverpool to go on a run again. We absolutely have to. Otherwise, we will be so far behind Manchester City and Man United that the title race will be over in the middle of February, which would be the biggest disappointment that, uh, that Liverpool could have for the past three seasons. And we might even be behind fourth place by a few points. There is another factor that could complicate Liverpool signing a centre-back in the January transfer window because Liverpool will be required to submit a revised squad list for the remainder of the Premier League season after the deadline of the January transfer window which is February the 1st with any changes notified to the Premier League. A maximum of 17 non-homegrown players can be named in the squad at any given time eight homegrown players required if a club is to register the 25 full man 20 full 25 man group along with any number under the age of 21 so right now Liverpool have 16 non homegrown players and eight homegrown players and of course uh, quite a few who are under 21s and the one player who is not registered is Van Dijk so currently there is one non homegrown slot vacant and if Van Dijk is um, close to being fit in February, if he is available for like March or April, then Liverpool will name Van Dijk in the squad. So this poses a big decision. If Jurgen Klopp were to bring in a new non-homegrown player in the transfer window, you either register him, but then you omit Van Dijk from the squad, or you can't register him if you want to register Van Dijk. So the Liverpool squad is largely settled, but in this unique season with the threat of injury or, or illness uh, looming constantly, the manager will be reluctant to make any big changes. Two, there are two potential departures, Adrian and Divo Corrigi could depart and they are both in the non-homegrown squad. So I think what I should, what I would do if I was Liverpool, I would sell uh, Adrian maybe and just rely on Callagher as our second choice goalkeeper. So sell Adrian in the in January transfer window, that frees up a, a squad space for the non-homegrown player. So you can sign a non-homegrown player even on loan and you can still register Virgil van Dijk. I think Adrian is the one player that Liverpool don't really need right now. He's third choice goalkeeper and he has fallen out of the favour at, uh, at Liverpool and he only has six months remaining on his contract. So Adrian is leaving at the end of the season anyway. So either just release him or sell him for a, like a small fee and, uh, and just make uh, Kelleher uh, the th second choice goalkeeper. That's what I would do. And Simon Hughes, the journalist, said that Liverpool, if Liverpool avoid the January transfer window, that could have far-reaching consequences well beyond this season. This is what he said. Jürgen Group's warning after the draw against Man United that the most important thing for Liverpool is to qualify for the Champions League. That should have acted as a big reminder of the world that Liverpool, led by FSG, operate in. Football is a game of snakes and ladders, and if given the model in place at Liverpool, it will take time for the club to recover if uh, Liverpool finish outside the top four. And that's what I've been saying, this is just my comment, that's what I've been saying for weeks. If Liverpool miss out on the top four, it would cost far, far more 
than signing a center back right now. And that's that's the biggest mistake that FSG could make, risking Liverpool missing the top four because without a center back, I mean, if Fabinho gets injured, we are guaranteed finishing outside the top four, almost no question. Should Liverpool fail to qualify for the Champions League, current players will want to leave. It will become even more difficult to renegotiate contracts and the targets that Liverpool wanted to sign in summer won't want to come to Liverpool. FSG deserves enormous credit for steadily building Liverpool season after season, but after more than a decade of ownership, they should be aware of this by now that um, if Liverpool miss out on the Champions League, it, it will have a very, very big con consequences. And also, uh, here is an interesting story for you guys. The Mirror is reporting that Rafa Benitez, after quitting uh, Dalian Ifang, uh, the Chinese club that he has been working at for a couple of seasons, he could be appointed the new Celtic manager after quitting the job. What a story that would be. Steven Gerrard managing Rangers against Rafa Benitez managing Celtic. What a duo. What a duo that would be. I mean, Steven Gerrard's Rangers is absolutely flying. They only have three draws. They are unbeaten in the Scottish Premier League. They are 23 points clear at the top of the Scottish Premier League after yesterday's 5-0 win against Ross County. Yes, Celtic have a couple of games in hand, but still, even if they win that, they will be like 14 or 17 points behind the Rangers. And it's an absolutely staggering how Gerard turned the Rangers around because um, Celtic are by far the stronger uh, club, the richer club. He, they have the strongest squad in the Scottish Premier League. They have fallen apart this season and Rangers took full advantage and they fully will deserve the Scottish Premier League title if they can see it through. But I think... Uh, Rafa, Rafa Benitez at Celtic would be actually be a fantastic move for him because there he would uh, be able to win trophies and, and uh, challenge for titles and it would be very interesting to see Gerard and Rafa Benitez going head to head with Celtic and Rangers and uh, I really want Rafa to go to Celtic because I think it's a, it's a big club, it's a great club with a great fan base and Rafa Benitez deserves a big job like that. So that's it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.